Thanks for tuning in. This is my 12 minute bridge lesson. So yeah. Um, so this is wonderful um, for strengthening your quads and in between your shoulders. Um, it's really, really great to take um, tension out of the low back. It works your core as well as the tops of your thighs, your quads. Alrighty, so I'm gonna show you the basic alignment first and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of it, okay? If you would like to grab a pillow at this time, I invite you to do so. Um, it could literally be one just as small as this that you can fold over. So, because you're gonna place this under the small of your back. Or if you have a yoga block, that's great because you have the two different settings of the low setting and then the tall setting, right? All right, so let's see here. Let me pull this up a little closer for you guys. Okay, so for this bridge pose, You come down onto your back, your knees are tented, your feet are on the floor. Yeah? From here, your arms can come down along your sides, the palms can be facing down. You're going to walk your heels in toward your glutes as if you could touch the back of your heels with your fingertips. And then on an inhale, you lift your pelvis. Now you can stay here, or you can roll each individual shoulder underneath and then you can kind of clasp your hands under the small of your back all the while lifting through the core and the quads to come out of this you release the hands from underneath bring the arms up overhead come up to your tippy toes and then slowly roll down until your hips are back on the floor so that's bridge pose that's the the most basic little walkthrough of bridge pose that I can give to you. So you can hold that pose and hold your pelvis lifted and that's what makes it static and you can breathe through that. And there are, excuse me, there are tons of different cues that I'm gonna walk you through in a bit to really re remain active in this pose. Because yeah, you could just lackadaisically lift your hips and then just breathe and and not engage muscle groups. But it's when you engage the muscle groups that you begin the strengthening portion of this pose. So let's come back into that. On your backs, walk the feet in. So your heels are right against your glutes as close as you can get them so you can touch them maybe a little bit with your fingertips. And on an inhale, you lift the hips. So I'm not gonna roll my shoulders all of the way under right now. My arms are down along my sides because we're gonna focus on the legs. So your legs are super stable right now. The heels are on the ground, the toes are on the ground. And so one of the best things um, to do is to activate your adductors. The adductors are your inner thigh muscles, right? So when you're in this bridge pose, you're going to squeeze your knees together, imagining there's an imaginary yoga block between them. And what that does is that activates your inner thighs as well as your quads. Now let's take a focus back to the glutes, the hips. I bet they're super clenched right now. Mine certainly are. So on every exhale that you're holding here, you can soften and relax those glutes and unclench them and you may lose a couple of inches in the pelvis in the lift there so on that next inhale you rise back up using the core and the quads to lift and on the exhale relax those glutes again and that alone makes this such an active pose really truly does um and that's enough to like you could sweat here if you hold that enough and go through movements of exhaling to lower the hips down to come out of it properly with the um, with the anatomy tips that I just told you about on how to get out of it safely, okay? So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, obviously, a lot of the weight is coming to the back of the neck, so you're getting a beautiful stretch in the back of the neck there because the weight of the body is going to pull the back of the neck, right? You're also stretching the chest because the chest is listed, lifted. Wow. The chest is lifted and you're rolling those shoulders underneath, which really gets across the collarbones and the chest into the pec muscles. You're stretching your spine, specifically that those lumbar lower um, vertebrae at the bottom because you're lifting, right? You're exaggerating that low back arch. And then your hip flexors. Your hip flexors are, if you uh, looked at my Align class from yesterday, we did a whole class that focused on the front of the hips. The front of the hips, these hip flexors, are basically your quads. So the flexion of the hip is literally this motion. 
flexion of the hip is bringing the knee up. That's flexion of the hip. Okay? So, let's see here. Like I said, you're using those quads very actively and those adductors too to squeeze those thighs together. You're opening your pecs, like we said. Um, so be careful of your knees here. Sometimes I get a really interesting inner knee sensation when I'm in this pose. Um, and just being aware of that and making sure it doesn't develop into actual pain. Um, if it's painful, then I would invite you to grab the prop. So let's talk about this supported bridge pose. Supported bridge pose is actually more along the lines of a restorative pose. It's so nice. What you're doing by adding this pillow underneath the small of your back, which I will show you in a minute, what you're doing by, by adding that is um, you're creating this space, traction, in the five lower lumbar vertebrae. The lower lumbar vertebrae are the most weight-bearing vertebrae of the spine. So allowing those vertebrae and the discs in between them specifically to have a little bit of lift and space is just such a huge way to release low back tension. It's super important. So taking that pillow, if you have it, or a yoga block, you're going to put that right at the small of your back. Go ahead and lean back onto it. Tent your knees, plant the feet, walk the heels in, maybe touch them with your fingers, and then just kind of relax. So once again, if you have that yoga block, this is really nice because you can flip the yoga block to different degrees. I actually don't have one here at this house right now, but even just this slight lift is just super relaxed. So it doesn't have to be a very active pose, right? It has these elements of restorative to it. So it's a really beautiful way to just release the low back and to be supported at the same time. But who doesn't like that? So if you ever, like, if you wake up with uh, any kind of low back pain or you go for a run or a hike or something and you're, you're really feeling it at the end of the day, this is a wonderful pose that you can do to relieve all of that tension and that tightness. Um, so you put that pillow right underneath the small of your back, maybe a couple of pillows, depending on how high up you actually want your hips to be lifted. And that's the cool part is you can control that too, right? Let's see here. Um, so let's go back to those glutes again. Um, so when you have the hips lifted, when you're actively engaging muscles in this pose to keep your hips lifted, really, really, really make sure that you are not clenching the glutes. What you're doing when you clench the glutes is you're actually, um, you're making it difficult for the hips to be lifted. The glutes want to pull the hips back into flexion. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to extend the hips and lift them up, right? So when you're clenching, that's actually bringing your entire pelvis down. Let's see if I can, um, let's see if I can model that for you right now. So hips are lifted. If I'm clenching, my whole hip sag. You have to lift. And then if I clench at the top, it feels like you're sending your hips up. But what you're doing is you're actually creating muscular tension within the front of the hips that is um, causing them to tighten, which makes them want to actually collapse and bend instead of straighten and extend. I hope that makes sense. I know that was a lot of verbiage. Basically, don't clench your glutes. With every exhale that you are holding your hips up in a bridge pose, you have to focus on relaxing your glutes because then that really makes it more of a core pose too. It activates your core, which is really cool. I never really you know, think about bridge as being a core pose. Let's see how we're doing on time. Sweet, I got two minutes. These 12 minute lessons are super fun. I hope you guys are um, paying attention to all the other ones that we have going on. I've posted a couple different statuses. Um, I will repost one after this just so that you guys have access to those. And let's see, what else is going on? So this is technically, um, let's talk about the alignment of the neck. Super duper important, I gotta touch on this, right? Because people always get worried about crunching the neck or putting too much weight on the neck. If you have a neck injury, I do not recommend this pose. It's just, it's not worth it. Don't, don't bother. Um, and if you want to message me and talk to me about things that you can do as an alternative, I'd be happy to help. Um, but basically you're not putting the weight directly on your neck. You should be trying to pour that body weight into your shoulders. The scapulas are depressing down. Scapula has elevation and depression. You are depressing them down to roll them underneath your chest to get your arms under your body, right? So when you do that, the shoulders are, the shoulder blades, the scapulas themselves are actually taking the brunt of the weight of the lifted spine. 
So that's really important is to focus on feeling the weight pour into the shoulders and not into the back of the neck because the back of the neck is an endangerment zone, right? So uh, that's my shtick on the proper neck alignment. You can definitely tuck the chin into the chest. That's fine. You may find it a little bit harder to breathe when you're doing that, but hang on, let, let's, let's, talk, let's talk that through actually. Let me talk that through with you. So yeah, you can't really tuck the uh, chin into the chest any further than your chest is already coming up into it. And actually what that does now that I'm feeling it and talking out loud about it is that maintains the proper back cervical, um, that concave kind of curvature to the back of the neck which is really, really important to maintain in this pose, right? You're not trying to change the, uh, the angle of the neck at all. The chin is literally meeting the chest because the chest is being lifted. Okay. This, uh, this pose definitely requires a high degree of coordination to think about all these different things that we've mentioned here today. So take it slow. Um, I'm constantly always reminding myself to release my glutes. It's not something that just clicks and it goes away, in my opinion, because the glutes are a very strong muscle group. They're always going to be trying to do more work than is necessary. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you have the supported bridge and the active bridge. Um, this is a preparation for full wheel pose, which is one of my personal favorites. It's a very excruciating back bend. Um, but yeah, bridge is a really, really beautiful way to restoratively or supportedly or even actively release back tension and activate the core and strengthen the quads and the inner thighs. So yeah, that's my shtick. Uh, if you have any questions, I know there was a ton of information to be thrown at you so quickly. If you have any questions, you can definitely reach out and message me. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions about yoga and about how to get yourself into your body to help you feel something different.